you, tiny girl. In this Bondi vet compilation, you won't believe the calamities these kittens get up to. Whoa. Oh my goodness. From the seemingly impossible... She's been wedging that table leg for anywhere up to three hours. ...to the utterly unimaginable. Oh my God. Oh my God. His tail's been ripped off. These little cuties get themselves into and out of the most extraordinary situations. At the Bondi Clinic, little eight-week-old kitten Coco has arrived in the arms of his anxious owner, Robert. OK, so just explain what's happened. Um, the dog walker found her under our dining room table. Yep. It's got a V-leg. Yep. She was lying upside down with her head stuck between the legs of them. Wow, OK. And we don't know for how long. Yep. We left home at about nine, so yep. this was about half past 12, so... And so it could have been anywhere up to three hours. Yeah. My real fear is that she dies, and uh, I have to explain that to two kids that have gotten to really like her a lot. Well, don't really know what we'll do then. And when she was actually freed, what did she do? According to the dog walker, she collapsed. She yeah. went completely limp. And then when she put her down, she just couldn't walk. At first glance, Coco isn't in a good way. She's been wedged in that table leg for anywhere up to three hours. And my worry is that in the effort to try to free herself, she may have actually done more damage. When you have two bars pushing in the side of your neck, you can get a situation where either you have uh, all the blood going to your mm. brain but not being able to get back Mac, from it, yeah. or you have not enough blood going there in the first place. Yeah. Did she have fairly straight eyes before? Um, I don't know. The thing is, this left eye, mm -hmm is deviated off to the left, whereas the, the right one is in a normal position. Yeah. Look, structurally, the rest of her feels OK. To be honest, if you ignore what's happened to Coco today and ignore her age and just look at the symptoms she's showing, what we're looking at here are the classic signs of a stroke. I can feel a little heart racing quite quickly there at the moment. So what we need to do is just try to reverse this sort of semi-comatose state we've got at the moment. So. My feeling is that her brain's gone through some sort of shock there, yeah. um, which is now affecting the rest of her body. What I'd like to do is do two things. First of all, get her on some oxygen, just okay. to help stabilise her, but also give her something for the shock, okay. something that's going to take away any swelling that she might have on her brain. My hope at the moment is that it's just exhaustion from her trying to free herself from that table leg. But the big concern is obviously she may have a serious brain injury. I'm just going to sleep on here. Chris is giving little Coco oxygen to try to alleviate the effects of shock. Coco's body is essentially playing tricks on her. It's panicking, which means she's taking shallow breaths, and shallow breaths just aren't effective enough. She's taking deeper breaths there, which is good. The issue we have with shock is that it's essentially where the body starts to, to shut down. It panics and, and doesn't have a normal distribution of the blood supply and also the oxygen in that blood supply. The positive sign at the moment is that Coco is taking deeper breaths. The most effective way of making sure the blood goes to the organs where it needs to go is by giving her a really strong dose of anti-inflammatories. So I'm just going to go into the muscle here. There we go. The hope is that between the oxygen and the very strong anti-inflammatory, we'll find a way to actually decrease the pressure on her brain and actually allow her to fight off the shock she's currently experiencing. So she's breathing a bit more easily there. I might just set up the x-ray and get a quick shot. In struggling to free herself, Coco could have injured her jugular, arteries, or worse still, her spinal cord. An x-ray will allow Chris to check whether the bone structure is still intact. X-ray! OK, so I've just isolated that area around the neck that was actually stuck between those table legs. So what I'm looking for are any signs of any fractures or, or any areas of extra swelling that just shouldn't be there. All the critical things for survival are all in this one zone and they've all been crushed. So it gives you a great indication about why you're entitled to be so concerned. All our vertebrae are in place and we've got no little bony pieces coming off to the side there. So we've got no fractures. The only damage we must have in this neck region is soft tissue damage. My feeling is when those bars pressed in, it meant the blood flow was still able to get to the brain, but it just wasn't able to drain away through the veins. 
that meant essentially the blood pressure within the brain got really high. If that pressure inside of her skull has become too much, then there's always the risk she could have had a bleed, essentially had an aneurysm inside of her brain. And that could explain the signs we're seeing in her right now. So she's just here, she's just on oxygen there. Yeah, she's, look, she's doing okay. The little kitten also has two other special visitors, Robert's daughter, Kira, hey, and friend, hello. Ariella. How are you going? So I'm Chris. Hi. Nice to meet you guys. So you've obviously heard what's happened. So she's just resting here at the moment. You can see she's not too aware of what's going on around her at the moment. Mm -hmm. But what we're trying to work out is whether that's just because she's very tired, because she's had a very big day, or whether she may have actually done herself some damage. We're doing the best we can. I know she's doing the best she can as well. I promise you I'm not going to rest until we see some sort of sign of improvement from her. After seeing Coco's family this afternoon, clearly there is a lot of love for her out there and hopefully that does count for something. My wish is that over the next 12 hours or so, with some extra rest and with some more time for those drugs to take effect, she really does turn a corner. But at the moment, there's no way of knowing if that's going to happen. A lot of people at home that want you home as soon as possible. Okay, okay. You're a funny little thing, aren't you? We might just use this chance while those eyes are open to have a look in there, just see what sort of response we're getting from the pupils. Chris is looking for any sign of improvement, however small, in little Coco. OK, yep. So we're getting a response there. If there's one thing that's worrying me, it's the fact that Coco still doesn't have much awareness of what's around her, and that's a, a really big hallmark of a brain injury. If there is one positive, it's the fact that her pupils are actually responding to the light. But it's been six hours since the accident, and she's still not really showing too many signs of awareness and is still in that semi-comatose state. I would have hoped by now that we'd be starting to turn a corner and be starting to see some more positive signs. But you have to remember that Coco's young and today has been a day like no other. Are you all right? That's it. Chris is now concerned about the eight-week-old's hydration levels. I mean, it seems strange that just a few hours ago we were worried about almost too much blood pressure and now we're trying to replace that fluid in her system to make sure she doesn't become dehydrated. So it's just the challenge of looking after small kittens. Things change very quickly with them. All right, so she's now going to stay well hydrated. She's got those drugs on board from before. I think we're probably OK to actually give her a cage to rest in now. Yeah, OK. Coco will spend the night under observation at the clinic. OK, Coco, welcome to your little hotel. So what we need to do is something you're very good at. Yeah, we're just sleeping. My hope is clearly that today has just been a massive day for her, and the reason she's so unresponsive is because she's simply exhausted. I'm not sure if I'm being too optimistic in thinking that, but hopefully with, say, 6, 12 hours, we'll start to see some more positive signs from her. See you later. Won't be too far away. What did you do with that kitten that couldn't keep its eyes open? Where did she go? Overnight rest has seen a remarkable improvement in little Coco. What did you do with that kitten that couldn't keep its eyes open, huh? When I first look at Coco, I'm almost tempted to scan her microchips to make sure this is the same kitten. And overall, it's chalk and cheese, isn't it? We're dealing with a different kitten this morning. You do see this with kittens. Their metabolic rate is so fast, things move so quickly in their body that really, if you can give them half a reason to heal, quite often, they will take it. So if you can see it, I'm guessing, I'm gonna do this, which I know you don't like. You're gonna rinse up a bit, aren't you? Yeah, there we go, nice little blink. Pupils are constricting, it's good. It doesn't look like much, but for her to be seeing where I'm moving that white light around and eventually trying to swipe at it, that is the best sign we've seen from her in the last day. And now there's only one thing on the little battler's mind. <laughs> Thank you. I need that. Yeah. For 
patients that are as severely affected as Coco was, we usually withhold food. I use that a lot, yeah? But now, given they've actually shown these signs of improvement, it's time to see just how hungry she is. Normally, kittens, they, they chew their food before they swallow it, not just inhale it. Don't want to talk right now? I think that's enough food for now. The stomach of yours is bulging. It was hard not to get caught up in the emotion of yesterday when Coco's family came and visited. But now, the really positive thing is I get to call them up and give them the good news. They said you're going to have to get better. And could you pull through for everyone and look what you've done. You just will keep on doing what you're doing. Yeah? You're looking good, aren't you? Yeah. A miraculous turnaround in Coco's recovery means she's finally able to go home. Chris phoned me today and said she's much better. She was jumping around, she bit his finger. Yeah. Coco's excited family can't wait to be reunited with their extra special little girl. Last night at home was uh, very quiet. We got used to a little cat bouncing around. Uh, she's quite a nocturnal cat, so yeah, she usually wakes up at about two o'clock in the morning and goes for a run around the house. So it was um, odd not having her there. Hello, guys. Hi, Chris. Hi. How are you? Good. 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 Do you want to come with me? Yeah. yeah. I think everyone remembers their first pets and remembers just how much they meant to them. So I was never going to be the guy that had to tell those kids that Coco wasn't going home. So there's someone that's demanding an urgent meeting. <laughs> what do you think? Coco. What do you reckon? You're a pretty good judge. You know it pretty well. Yeah. How is she doing? She's purring. Yeah. She's better. So you're the vet here now. <laughs> so what do you think? Much better. Much better. Yeah. This isn't the Coco we saw yesterday, right? No. Yeah. She's made a big improvement overnight. Ultimately, she just needed some time to relax, to rest, and, and try to get everything back on track. But as you can see, I don't think she's back to 100%, but that's a lot to expect that's within a day. <laughs> There's no doubt that the brain is by far and away the most complicated organ in the body, so it makes sense that it's going to take multiple days, even weeks, for Coco to re-establish those connections, those pathways that allow her to jump around, to leap around like a normal kitten does. Absolutely. Big question for us. Does she come home? You're pretty keen, right? Mm -hmm. This is where it becomes very hard on me, because how do I say no <laughs> to you guys? How about we make a deal? Okay. So she can go home. Yeah but she can't play with you guys too rough. And I'm led to believe she may play with the dog. Dog, yeah. So you can't let her play with the dog for a few days? Yeah. yeah. So there's nothing more to do than hand her over. Here we go, Tiki. She's all yours. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. As the owner of a kitten <laughs> that has a similar personality, I, I mean that when I say good luck. <laughs> Thank you. You, you're obviously going to have some good, very good times coming up. Okay. So, yeah. Lots of adventures. Yeah. The adventures of Coco. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I've got no doubt that this is the first of many adventures for Coco, but hopefully it is the most serious. And from here she does actually mature. She learns to behave just a little bit because there's that loving family that cares for her a lot. And I'm sure right now they can't imagine life without her. Hello. Hey, Chris. How are you? How are you doing? I'm it's good. very good to see you. Good to see Hello. You. Hi. How are you going? Good. I'm almost nervous to ask. Hi. Where is she? She is uh, hiding. She's hiding? Under there. As for little Coco, she's finally recovered from her nasty fall a month ago and is back to her mischievous self. Oh, look at you. Butter wouldn't melt. When Coco went home, we were all very much aware of the fact it was going to be a long recovery. So I'm keen to see how she's changed. Wow. Oh, Ooh, a little yeah. miss, a little I miss like sensitive. <laughs> Has she mellowed? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's uh, as uh, energetic and full of adventure as usual. Yeah. Started climbing everything in, in the house, up and down, wherever she can go. Loves the garden. Yeah. 
and loves climbing trees. <laughs> climbing trees now. Yeah. Coco loves heights. She climbs all over the house, climbs onto funny places. Uh, Coco has been stuck up a tree three times now and uh, requires somebody to climb the tree to go and fetch her and bring her down. So this is the famous or infamous table? It didn't come with the socks. The socks is the, the new safety feature wow. to, to keep her out. But that's where she got her head wedged down there. And the socks are now there too, so that she doesn't slip down and fall. But it seems so innocuous, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. if you look at that, you would never think that a cat would get their head stuck in yeah. that. But it just shows you, doesn't it, when they're so adventurous, just, yeah. anything's possible. Trees, tables. Huh? And health-wise, how's she going? Fine, she's uh, picking up weight. Yeah. So normally she's well, nearly doubled in weight since we've had her. Yeah. She's a little play with your neck here. Yeah. <laughs> it's feeling good. It's not catching anywhere. There's no yeah. resistance to that. The neck is moving nice and freely yeah. there. Importantly, those eyes are nice and open and, and certainly pointing straight ahead. ahead. Has she been clumsy at all since? She was. When she just came back, she was clumsy for quite a while. When she stood up, she just like, start walking forward. Mm. But it, it, you know, every day, you can actually nearly by hour see the improvement coming through. I mean, it's interesting because what you describe is exactly what someone that has a brain, brain injury, injury has yeah. to go through, yeah. is, is essentially teaching themselves to, to learn to walk, learn to have that learn coordination back, again, yeah. and, and teaching the brain to, to function in a normal way. And it shows you how serious it was yeah. for her. To see Coco today, it's so heartwarming to see how much she has recovered, how she is now back to normal, clearly enjoying home life. Yeah, it feels amazing. Hey, yeah. So this is a stray kitten that the lady's been looking after, but unfortunately she couldn't come in today because she's got COVID. Her friends dropped the cat off, doesn't know anything about the kitten. Hello, yes. Just to say you've got an injury on your back end somewhere, haven't you? A kitten has arrived at Scott's Isleworth practice with no name and virtually no details of what's wrong with him. All right, shall we have a look at you? Hey. Scott's in for a shock. Look how pretty you are and he discovers the nature of the little stray's injury. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. His tail's been ripped off. Isn't that just shocking? Yeah. My heart's absolutely broken for this poor little kitten. The injury that this kitten has suffered is absolutely horrific. I haven't got any information as yet and I'm wondering, has it maybe had an incident with a car, it's run, and the tail's been run over, and the cat's kept going. This was an agonizing, almost tearing of the tail away from this poor cat's body. You can see that we have probably a good couple of centimeters of exposed spinal column. So we're gonna have to clean this up. While his hapless patient is prepped for surgery. It makes some calls to clients sometimes, but um, not usually to say their animals lost a body part and they didn't know. Scott calls the lady who rescued the tiny stray to see if she can shed some light on his horrendous injuries. Oh, hi there, Alice. It's Scott Miller here, the vet from the vet in Old Isleworth. Hi. You've got COVID at the moment, haven't you? You're all right. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I've got it. You poor thing. Just tell me a little bit more about this little stray kitten. Uh, your friend mentioned that the cat had a bit of a, like a, a sore at the back end. What, what did you understand that his injuries were? She got caught underneath the recliner sofa. Oh, a recliner sofa. Oh, I get it. So when it reclined, his tail was in the gap. Probably would be. Oh, Alice. Gosh. Oh, you poor things. It sounds horrific. It was a terrible day. Thank All right then, Alice. So All Thanks. the best. Okay. Thanks. Bye. 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 Oh my God. I feel so much for this family. They were trying to do the right thing. They'd rescued a cat. And yet less than 24 hours into that journey, this cat's had its tail ripped from its body. That process of amputation was not a quick one. This is just a traumatizing situation for all involved. Still so sweet, aren't you? You're always such a nice boy. Tail or no tail, you're an absolute sweetheart. Yeah. Given what the young stray has endured, 
Scott gives him a name that reflects his unfortunate start to life. So many animals are called lucky. I think unlucky, eh? unlucky. Whenever we see a patient that suffered a traumatic tail injury, we always want to check for two things. First of all, that there's something called anal tone that the, the bum kind of puckers when you touch it and that will show they're not going to be incontinent. And the second thing is that they can still use their back legs and they're nice and strong on them because sometimes when you pull the tail it can affect the spinal cord further up the body and that can have an impact on the hind limbs function. So that's good. Jonas is not going to be constipated alongside having this awful injury. Finally, some good news for Unlucky. His hind legs and rear end seem to be working normally. Okay, buddy. Sleepy time now. Good boy. Have a lovely dream and try and forget that nightmare you've been through. So what I'm going to be doing with Unlucky here is I'm just clipping up the tail and seeing what's left. Oh my god. Oh. Wow. This section at the end is actually a vertebrae. So that's actually a bit of bone. The spine is made up of a series of vertebrae, as we know, and then the ones in the tail stacked along. This one hasn't pulled off completely, but is folded to the side. It's absolutely horrific. I've never seen anything like this in my whole career. I've seen some pretty severe injuries but one as a result of a reclining chair, well, this is a first for me. So what I need to do is to trim that back and to be able to cover the skin in the area. So yeah, it's a shame that Unlucky won't have a tail, but he's managed to survive this horrific ordeal. He's lost two thirds of his tail. Unfortunately, he's gonna lose a little bit more now. Accidents happen. And I can relate to that because my cat Ricketts has actually had this procedure done three times. When he was very young, he got it stuck in a door. Let's take a little bit off. Then got it stuck in a window. Take a little bit more off. And then he got attacked by another cat. I take a little bit more off. So <laughs> pretty much every few years, Ricketts' tail got ever increasingly shorter. So a little unlucky won't miss his tail because he has lost it at a very early stage of his development. This guy will develop perfectly well without it, so he'll be just fine. That's all done. That looks a lot better, so I can say with complete modesty that I am far better at amputating a cat's tail than a recliner chair. After 24 years, thank goodness for that. <laughs> just finished his back end, just come to the front because I wanted to check his mouth, because my thought would be, if my tail was caught in a reclining chair, I would probably try and bite at it, thinking it was trying to attack me. And then looking into his little mouth, you can see that he's actually lost both of his bottom baby canines. And there's actually some loose teeth here, so he's definitely given that reclining chair a good old bite. Just like when a mountain lion's got their leg caught in a snare, they'll chew at the actual trap, but also the leg themselves and in this case this kitten has been chewing and biting at the sofa to try and let this tail go. Yeah, good boy. That's it. Well done. There we go. Oh, poor little man. He's obviously been lost or abandoned. Then he's found a new home only to have his tail be amputated. I think the name Unlucky really suits him. I hope this is the end of his bad luck. Uh, he's not had a good run, have you, mate? You need to start looking after yourself. Boy. Oh, poor little boy. Yes, come on then. Come on then. Sweet heart. Good boy. Just leave surgery to the professionals, okay? All right. Anxiously waiting for news is Unlucky's rescuer, Alice.
Hi there, Alice. It's Scott here again, the vet. How are you? Hi. Um, he's lost about two thirds of the length of the tail and we thought yeah. it was a good idea to microchip him at the same time so that uh, yeah, hopefully yeah. this is the last time that he's ever stray again. He has been incredibly unlucky. Giving him that as a nickname, actually, I hope you don't mind. But he's young and I think that he'll get over it very, very quickly. So I really don't think that you should worry. He's lost a magnificent tail, but he's gained some lovely owners and a lovely new home. So unlucky will be just fine. Okay. Okay, Great. see you later, speak soon. Unlucky's owner said, what a beautiful fluffy tail this little kitten had. And yes, he's been quite unlucky, but he's got away with this traumatic injury. So I'd hope that even though he has a short tail, he will have a very long and healthy future ahead of him. At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, Deb and her daughter Meg have brought in their five-month-old kitten. Oh, Lily, it's all right. Lily Pilly. The family adopted Lily only five weeks ago, and 12-year-old Meg is already in love. This much. <laughs> I love her a lot. But now her new best friend is in real trouble. Well, she's eaten a rubber band about that size, I think. Oh, mm. that's quite a long one. It was yes. around a bunch of flowers. And as I was opening the flowers, it flipped off Excellent. and she pounced on it. OK, so you can see there it's not under her tongue. No. The problem with leaving it in, if, you, if it's as long as, as that mm. and she's chewed it, it can cause the intestines to sort of all bunch on top of each other and it can be a really nasty obstruction. That can be life-threatening. To avoid invasive surgery, Lisa will first attempt to make Lily vomit up the rubber band. But for cats, this can be a tricky procedure. They just don't respond to the medications in the way that dogs do. Yeah, so it's, mm -hmm. it's a bit of a nightmare. Can I ask as well what type of flowers they were? Ah, lilies? <gasps> lilies cause kidney failure in cats. Really? And any part of the plant is toxic. Most of the time we can't get them back from that. Oh, okay, dear. so it's actually better for her that she's eaten the rubber band rather right. than gone and had a nibble on the lilies. Oh, okay. Good Thank luck. Thank you. Good luck. Absolutely. That's Throw up that. well. I had no idea that it was this serious. I just thought, oh yeah, they'll just give her a tablet and out it comes and off we go. Hey, little mouse. Had no idea that it would be like this. Yeah. Oh, so brave. Good Lisa's girl. now giving Lily a sedative shot to try to make her vomit. She vomits and then you can if she doesn't, the kitten will need to be cut open. Come on, little one. I know it's horrible. I feel really mean. Come on, little one. Come on, licking the lips. Licking the lips. A big vomit, please. We're scared that she might not be coming back. And before, when I gave her a kiss and bye-bye, good luck, that might have been the last goodbye to Lily that I would have with her. Hopefully it's not going to be that grim. No, <laughs> let's hope not. Hopefully they know what they're doing in there. Yep, I reckon they will. Yeah. We don't want you to have to have surgery. You're only a baby. An hour later and still no action. The question now is whether the kitten is going to listen to Lisa or cause herself a whole lot of pain. It's the easy way out. You've got to feel worse before you can feel better. Hey? You're a naughty little thing. It wasn't a lizard. Lily is running out of time. If she doesn't regurgitate the rubber band she swallowed, the five-month-old kitten will need surgery to prevent a fatal blockage. A big vomit. Finally, some encouraging signs. Come on, good girl. Good girl. That's a girl. Oh, I'm sorry, my sweet. Oh, and there's a rubber band. Yes, there is. Woohoo! Success. Success. Yeah. Well done. But seriously, that is a long a piece thing. of rubber in a cat of this size. That could have been really bad. She's a one-hit wonder. <gasps> oh, hello, Lily. Now Lily just needs rest and love from her family. As for little Meg, she can stop worrying. Hello, 
Are you better now? <laughs> I'm just so happy. <sighs> Big relief. Yeah. The police search and rescue squad has been called out to help a trapped cat. My doorbell went about one o'clock this morning. I jumped out of bed and went to the front door and there were two policemen. And they said there was a little kitten under the bonnet of my car and I was very, very distressed. I'm so grateful the neighbours did hear the little kitten because it you know, if I'd come up in the morning and it was still there and I didn't know and I started the car, I, I mean, it, it would have hurt and it could have even killed it, I imagine. It, it just would have been horrific if something had happened to it. Come on. Can you grab him from there? Are you able to grab him? But just when the rescuers finally get their hands on the feisty kitten, it takes off into the bushes. Somewhere here, in the vicinity. So with Aileen leading the search, the neighbours have all joined in. Can you hear him? Come on, little one. Come on. Come on. We're going to look after you. Come on, where are you? He's frightened with us trying to get him out. I'm worried he'll come out and he'll just run across the road again and there's so much traffic. He could get hit with a car. Hey, push. Gotcha. Hey, hey, push. Explain to me how you have... How we had this dear little kitten. Well, uh, it was early hours of Sunday morning. Two policemen rang my doorbell to say he was under the bonnet of my car. But he escaped. Cross Carrington Road, which is a very busy road, so he's, he's used up one of his lives, I feel. <laughs> and he hid in the garden all night. So eventually enticed him out about 12 midday. Yeah. It's a big weekend for a little very guy. Very big weekend, yeah. And the boys happened to be staying overnight, so they were there to help Grandma look after him, weren't you? Have you noticed he keeps on turning around and licking? So I'm just wondering if he might have some fleas. He does. Is it? What do you reckon this gets rid of? The thing gas. <laughs> if only it was that simple. <laughs> With the fleas treated, Chris then worms and vaccinates the runaway. That. There you go. That was even like notice your head, wasn't it? The most important thing before anyone gets too attached, mm -hmm. which might be a little bit too late, <laughs> uh, we should probably check, check it for a bucket chip. Did you hear a beep? What do you reckon that means? We can keep it. Chris now needs to notify the council and local animal shelter. It'll be a week before Aileen can take the kitten home. So are you okay to wait a few days before you take him home? <laughs> For five-year-old Logan, a week is a very long time. He'll be all right, Logan, with Dr Chris is going to look after him. <laughs> I think it would be heartbreaking to not keep him now. And I have been thinking about getting another cat, so yes, maybe it was fate. I almost hope no one comes to collect him. Because you look at Logan and Declan, they've already become so attached, they'll be devastated if they have to give up their new little buddy. Mate, how did you get across here? Look at it. Madness. One week later, and nobody's claimed the runaway kitten. It's the last time you ever crossed this road. So Chris is delivering a very special parcel to some very happy boys. Hey. Dr Chris, Declan, look who's here. here. Look who's here. Isn't he beautiful? Hey. Do you want hold. to hold him, Logan? Remember how to hold him? Very good. Oh, very good. You're a dear little fellow, aren't you? Oh, I'm very happy to have him. Very happy to have him. It's just nice to have that other little heartbeat in the house. And the boys will love coming over to see him. I'll leave you the task of taming. Yes, yes, all life. right. I'll, I'll do my best. No Thank worries. you for bringing him to us.
just got little Sasha. Apparently she's swallowed a USB. On the Gold Coast, a four-month-old kitten has been rushed into the emergency hospital after she chewed off the end of a USB cable. Hey, sweetheart. Are you in there? Hey, tiny girl. Hello, beautiful. Oh, she's so scared. USBs are generally made of inert metals, so the metal itself is not toxic. It's the size of the object that's a concern. If the USB gets stuck in the little kitten's digestive tract, she could become gravely ill or die. So we're going to x-ray her. If she's swallowed it, it's metal, it'll show up as clear as day. So we need to get these x-rays done. Gerardo's going to come in, help take these, so we can see how much trouble she's in. Come on, darling. Oh, oh here she is. Like, I didn't mean to, really just ate the whole cable. Unlike dogs, kittens may chew things. It's not very common that we see kittens coming in for foreign body objects in their stomachs. Okay. okay. The best case scenario here is the x-ray shows no metal in Sasha's stomach and whatever she chewed is somewhere in the house still. X-ray. Oh! Whoa! Oh my goodness. Ah, oh, no, there's stuff in there. There's metal right through there. Gerardo and I are shocked. You can see the USB metal clear as day on the x-ray. My level of anxiety just shot up. I don't know how we're going to get this thing out. Hmm, what are we going to do, eh? Hey? Almost one of those ones where we would try inducing vomiting, even though being a cat, unlikely. 50-50 chance of it working. Yeah. It's, a, it's not a good thing to swallow, not a good thing to eat. No, that's right. I don't right. know what she was thinking. It's a kitten. Inducing vomiting is commonly done when dogs and cats eat objects. It's low risk and it's quick, but the medication we use in cats is only effective about half the time. This might sting a little bit. Do you want to just turn it to face you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I get the bitey in Sorry. my head. Thank you very much. Sorry. There we go. I know. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. sting, sting. She did very good. So hopefully she's one that vomits. Yeah, but otherwise she might just fall asleep. I don't know. I think she's just going to fall asleep. It doesn't look like it's working, hey Sasha? You'd be so much better if you just brought it up. She's just going to go to sleep, isn't she? If she'd brought it up, that would have been great. Problem solved. Mm. She hasn't brought it up, so what next? We've been unsuccessful in inducing vomiting in Sasha. We'd always prefer not to do surgery. It would be a major operation to do an exploratory laparotomy and open Sasha's stomach, and she could be in hospital for up to a week. Might just see if she passes herself. Yeah. She's, She's not going to vomit. Let's wake her up. Let's wake her up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. To avoid a risky surgery, Alex and Gerardo have decided to give Sasha one last chance to pass the USB metal naturally. Now what we need to do is place an IV catheter and start on some IV fluids. That will help keep her stomach and her intestines moving and fingers crossed past the end of that USB cable. Okay, here we go. Oh, one of the nurses made a bed for you. Let's start you with some fluids and you be a good little kitten and pass that metal. Hey, okay, see you in the morning, hey? Sasha's owners must love this little girl. How could you not adore this beautiful little kitten? Bye-bye, Sasha. I hope she goes okay during the night. Are you in there? Hello? Are you in there? Hello? Oh, hello. Hello. Next morning, Gerardo is checking on little Sasha to find out whether she has passed the end of the USB cable in her sleep. Oh, I felt something a bit hard in there. Let's go have a look at his x-rays. Hopefully it's moved on. So the team of the night has repeated x-rays with Sasha. Let's have a look. Uh, it's still in the stomach. So this is not ideal for Sasha. I was hoping that it would move through with the food, but it hasn't. It's just remained in the stomach. The food has moved on, but that metal and plastic stuff is, is still in the stomach there. So that gives us only two options. One is to go to surgery and to remove it, or to perform a scope. Performing an endoscope on such a small kitten will be extremely challenging, but it's far better than doing invasive surgery. Well, that might fit. It'll be very close. I think it's worth a go. 
So what we can do is put this down her esophagus, so it fits in, and then if it does, then we can feed the claw in there and we can hopefully grab onto it and pull it out. Fingers crossed. Okay, little kittens, can I have your little leg, please? Thank you. So before we go and put a camera down her esophagus into her stomach, we're going to repeat an x-ray to make sure that it's still in the stomach. And then we're going to stay still for us. Thanks, Ray. But all of a sudden, there's a change of plan. Oh, this is some good news. It looks like it's no longer in your stomach. Your little stomach's moved it on. Luck has finally turned in our favour. What the x-ray shows us is the USB parts are now within the intestine, and one of them has even made it all the way through into the colon. This is great news. This is great news because now we don't need to do an endoscope. She'll pull them out. With the troublesome USB cable gone from Sasha's stomach, Gerardo's lucky little patient can now enjoy a healthy meal. Let's have a see whether or not you want to eat some food for us. Hello, you there? Oh, hello. There you are. Oh, hey, there you're hiding. Oh, he's so cute. What's this food? It's food. The mountain of yumminess. Jump. Whoa. Jump, 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 jump. Sasha's going to be taken home tonight. Her mum and dad are going to monitor overnight, then take her to her primary vet in the morning, and they're going to repeat some radiographs. And I'm hopeful that that second foreign body will move through overnight. Hi, I'm Dr. Kate, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen for more great content. And for free, exclusive, never seen before Bondi Vet stories, you can sign up to bondipet.com and you can do so via the link in the description.